Hi, this is Victoria Weinstein. I'm a Unitarian Universalist minister, as many of you know. And it's September 29th, 2022. And I was in a Twitter conversation and argument about cultural appropriation, or I guess you would say religious appropriation of Jewish high holy days and rituals. And um, it's very complicated. Someone basically accused me of participating in Jewish appropriation of Jewish religion because I'm a Unitarian Universalist. Um, and aside from the fact that you can't explain complicated religious identity issues on Twitter, which, you know, my own religious identity is very complicated because I was raised Unitarian Universalist, but with a very strong Jewish identity in a Jewish identity identifying family with lots of Jewish family members. Um, my dad was Jewish. There was a big Jewish extended family around me. My dad married a non-Jewish woman. Um, my grandmother was Jewish. My uncles, you know, my cousins. So, so anyway, I have that history. And um, I just led a worship service inspired by Rosh Hashanah. And I thought, let I'd like to share my process of creating that worship service with you to share how I really carefully try to avoid cultural appropriation or appropriation of Jewish religion. Because again, I'm, I'm learning about this. I feel like a sense of ownership, kinship, et cetera, it, in um, belonging in Judaism in a certain way because of my my blood and my history and all of that. And then religiously, I am not religiously Jewish. Um, I didn't convert, which I would have had to had I um, wanted to be Jewish. So anyway, I want to make sure, and, and in fact, like I have not encouraged a Passover Seder in our UU church for a long time because I hear Jewish leaders can keep saying, please stop doing this, have something else, or be a guest at a Seder led in a Jewish context by a Jewish community. So it's it's always an ongoing conversation. When I prepared my Rosh Hashanah worship service, what I was really careful to do was to keep saying, this is inspired by the wisdom of the Jewish tradition, or um, uh, observant Jews do this at this time of year. Um, rabbis might say this at this time of year, um, next sun, next weekend, rather at sundown, you know, describing some of the practices of Yom Kippur um, or Tashlich, which is like the casting away of sins over the moving water. I didn't invite my congregation to do a Tashlich ritual or anything like it, because to me, that's where the line is. Like you, you know, to say this is done in a Jewish community in a religious context is much different than saying like, let's do Tashlich or let's celebrate Rosh Hashanah. And so I very carefully threw out my, um, my liturgical materials, you know, made sure that I was never kind of taking the position of claiming to be Jewish or to represent Judaism. But um, like even in my opening words, I said at sundown today, or uh, I don't remember, it wasn't sundown on Sunday, but it was like, this is Rosh Hashanah for the Jewish people. This is their new year. Um, so that's part of the, the, the care that we take in, in not um, appropriating religious traditions. There was a moment though, and this is how really how um, specific this gets. And by the way, also for many years, for I've been in parish ministry for 25 years. So I've been creating, you know, worship and some of it inspired by Jewish high holy days or in uh, referencing or in respect for, or in solidarity, for instance, with like, I've led a Yom HaShoah service, which is a day of remembrance that is not um, that's not a, a specifically Jewish, that's not a Jewish religious holiday. It's a remembrance day for any anybody. So, but anyway, I have talked at length with colleagues, with lay people, and with staff, especially faith development directors, 
who might be leading like a ch children's moment with music directors. I mean, we have really, really um, taken very seriously our responsibility as Unitarian Universalists to not, you know, um, be Jewish, right? So anyway, the person who accused me of um, of being careless or appropriative, it's like, I only wish you knew <laughs> how many hundreds of hours over the years we have, have dedicated to these conversations. And again, I speak for my colleagues. This is a very serious commitment in Unitarian Universalism. We have a really hard religious tradition, you know, and we have people actively in our congregations and clergy who are Jewish. Um, we don't have a tradition where you have to convert, like, from being, for instance, Jewish to being Unitarian Universalism. So we're, we're kind of unique that way. So anyway, we get a lot of, um, we have to grapple with a lot of complicated identity, religious identity issues. Um, so going back to that one specific detail that I ended up feeling uncomfortable about and slightly regretting was at the end of my sermon, which was about, what did I call it? I called it shameless. It was about the difference between guilt and shame. Um, and I ended my sermon because sometimes when you deliver a sermon, there's like this awkward moment at the very end where you're like, do I tack on an amen? Or like, I don't know. I don't like to always tack on an amen. I like to sometimes just let the last statement kind of land and be what it is. But I got a little nervous and a little anxious when I was up there preaching and I let the last comment, you know, or the last statement of the sermon land. And then I said, Shana Tova, which means, you know, it's happy new year in Hebrew. And I was like, ah, that's not mine to say. Um, so it happens, you know, you make, I don't know, mistakes, or I don't know if, if, um, if anybody but me would say that's appropriation. I, I don't know, except that I regretted it. And um, I know I have exchanged that greeting, Shana Tova, with my Jewish re re um, relatives and with friends. Um, it seems like a polite, nice thing to do. Just like I say, you know, I give uh, give appropriate Ramadan greetings to Muslim friends uh, during Ramadan and, and that kind of thing. So again, it's tricky, but we, we make the effort and we, we take it seriously. And that's all I think I wanted to say. Thanks for listening.